Okay, hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. This is Jean of Gaikoku Jean's Journey. So, magandang araw po sa ating lahat. So, in today's video, um, I'm gonna be sharing to you how to be a successful ALT here in Japan. Lalo na dun sa mga ALT na pa-start pa lang or nag apply pa lang mga aspiring ALTs for here in Japan. So, okay. So, um, I've thought of, I thought of this video kasi um, last time, I was actually part of the facilitating team or yung mga taong uh, nagtitrain ng mga bagong ALTs dito sa branch namin. And I was thinking, like, you know, these new ALTs, they've been juggling a lot of things in their minds. Kasi nga, they're new ALTs, they want to be successful, of course. Naman diba? Gusto natin na maging maayos yung trabaho natin dito sa Japan. And they want to settle also in their areas. They want to like prepare all the stuffs or their things in their apartments. And hindi ko alam, may mga ibang factors pa na iniisip tong mga ALTs na ito. So, um, in this video, naisipan ko, why not I share some tips to those aspiring ALTs, lalo na sa mga papunta pa lang dito, or yung, kahit yung sa mga ALTs na andito na, pero hindi pa din nila gamay. Kamay bang tawag doon? Hindi pa rin nila sure kung ano mga dapat gawin on how to be an effective assistant language teacher here in Japan. So, yun nga, going back, we did our training last March. March 23 to 20, um, was that 27th? Basta it was a 5 days training here in our branch. And because of the coronavirus thing, we've been observing um, social distancing. It, and and heat up. Pero, uh, natapos naman siya successfully. So, um, yun nga, isip ko, these people, they've been thinking a lot of things. They've been juggling too much um, things to be considered as they settle here in Japan. And But, they're also very excited kasi nga, they're gonna be teaching here in Japan. And if you're like me, I when I first came here in Japan, I have an idea already of what is teaching kasi I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher by profession in my home country. But then again, it's a whole of a lot different story when you teach here in Japan. The strategy is different. Although, um, if you're a teacher, you will already know what what we are going to... Or I mean, um, if you just hear the key points, then you will know already that, okay, so this is how you do it. But of course, um, for the sake of others also who doesn't have any idea of what is teaching, so that's why I'm sharing this video. Okay, so, and dami, and dami dapat I consider when you're teaching ESL here in Japan. Pero it's gonna be easy if we're gonna make an acronym for it. So, in my team last time in the training, I thought of... Or I made a, an, an acronym for them to remember. What are the key points to remember and for you to be a successful ALT in the classroom? Okay? So, natin patagalin pa. This is for ES, guys. Um, I'm teaching um, kinder and elementary schools here in Japan. For junior high school, I'll also be sharing that in my next video. But for today, let's focus on ES level. So, on ES level, so I made an acronym. It's called Gems in teaching. So, yun nga. G-E-M-S. Gems in teaching. So, anong meaning ng gems? So, let's start with letter G. Letter G stands for great and big gestures. Yun po siya. Okay? So, um, from the word itself, gestures. So, kailangan, um, kailangan mo ng appropriate gesture to accompany the words that you're going to um, tell or say in the class. And it goes as well to giving directions. So when you give directions, you don't tell them how, but you show them how and through gestures po. So yung gestures naman, eh hindi kailangan sobrang OA. Kasi diba, may mga... May mga abstract words tayo na hindi kailangan. Na, I mean, it's not appropriate if we're gonna use um, gestures for those kind of words. But then, um, what I can say is that your gestures should be applicable in real life situations. So, like, for example, what? So, that's very easy. So, what? You just do like this. And um, 
um, if you want them to think then you can say let's guess or let's think so this those kind of gestures things that you can apply in real life situation because it would be yung hindi sila mao awkward yung alam nila na oh this is appropriate to use in real life scenario okay so ganun po so dito sa Japan you'll get used to using a lot of gestures in your class so ganun siya so that's the first G and also take note guys um um gesture is also um in gesture also there's a culture a culture difference na dapat consider so like for example if you're used to pointing a person using your finger so in japan um it's a big no-no so maybe avoid using that and instead use your full hand to point to someone so it's like yes please yes please something like that so avoid pointing using your finger okay and um another gesture that should be avoided in here is the this thumbs up and thumbs down okay so um i know in our home countries this would not be a big deal i mean the thumbs up is fine but the thumbs down um, it's a little bit um rude to do that in here because it's associated with another meaning so if i were you i would try to avoid those kind of gestures so just use you can say okay thumbs up or you can go with the maru maru i'm sorry i'm gonna just push back a little so maru this means true or correct and batsu false or not correct so i would just go with that one instead of using the thumbs down and thumbs up but okay that's it okay so we're done with g so again g refers to great and big gestures okay so next is a e. e stands for easy to understand english when i say easy to understand english um it should be leveled to your students understanding so here in japan take note po they don't start english until third grade in elementary and third grade and fourth grade it's just an exposure it's a it's just um a an enjoy and fun activity to do in the class there's no grading system now in the fifth and sixth graders starting from this year um they've begun to like be more serious on dealing with the subject no it's not a subject and um, starting from fifth fifth and sixth grader spot subject na siya but i don't know if we're gonna have a grading system for that kasi nga sisimulan pa lang namin siya this school year so um ang alam ko lang is we're gonna have a speaking exam or um a test we're in we're just gonna grade the students a b c so it's it's more on um it's more it's more on speaking and listening po yung um focus natin sa elementary lalo na sa third and fourth graders but in fifth and sixth graders we would we will try or the curriculum wants us the board of education wants us to add up um the writing and reading this time okay so that's it so easy to understand english let's go back to that okay so this is one thing that i can tell you assume level zero in elementary and same goes with this high school students but it fits your first year in that school it's your first day with the students assume level zero po kasi hindi mo alam yung iba sa kanila they might have been to an ekawa ekawa is an after school um academy but most of them maybe it's their first time to have an exposure with the english class so just use as simple english as you can so simple english example use start instead of begin ganun po okay aside from that um ma 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 ano pa ba okay avoid using too much words in the class okay kasi it will it, it will confuse the kids kasi nga you're using a foreign language you're a foreigner in front of this all Japanese students. And nagsasalita ka ng, masya, ng marami English. You might be scaring them. So just um, simplify your English words. Like for example, 
Okay, everyone, please take a seat. That's difficult for them, I think. So what you should say is that, please sit down or please stand up, something like that. So simplify your English words, but okay. And as you as you noticed, my gestures it's accompanied by gestures. So that if some students don't know how to do it, they will like through the help of your gesture, they will be guided. Oh, okay. So maybe if I'm having a good time, okay, I'm having a good time. So yun po. Do not put your students into the spotlight we're in. Hindi mm, nila alam yung gagawin nila. Mapapahiya sila po. So, easy to understand English. That's our second gem in, second gem in teaching. Now, the third one is a modulated or projected voice. Okay, so you'll be in a classroom wherein mm, you're gonna have um, a rough estimate of 15, the least, to... 34 the most students in one class and of course since it's a foreign language and they're not used to hearing it you might want to modulate or to project your voice so that everyone in the classroom would be able to hear it properly or clearly okay and um yeah that's it so just imagine if your teacher is a very lousy teacher who doesn't have a great or a modulated voice, projected voice in the classroom, you would also tend to feel like um, you're sleepier, like you're tired. But if your teacher has a, a nice voice, a modulated voice, something that you can hear even if you're at the back of your classroom, then it would affect the energy of the students. So that's our third gems in teaching. So the last one, I mean not the last one, but the S in your gems of teaching is smile. So smile po tayo lagi, okay? Um, diba, kahit naman siguro tayong adult, if may nakita tayong tao na hindi nakangiti, eh, hindi din, we will not feel comfortable po, diba? So same goes with the students. We're a foreigner in the classroom, and if they see the foreigner not smiling, it would also scare them. They won't feel comfortable, but if you smile with them, I mean, if you smile to the students, then they will really appreciate it. So, smile ka lang po. Lali na pag worth it naman talaga na mag-smile. Pero if the situation is not worth it to smile, okay? Common sense, hindi ka lang mag-smile, okay? So, use good judgment. Okay, and the last one is, ito siya, gems plus P in teaching. Okay, so isingit natin si P. P goes for or stands for praise students genuinely. So, diba, it's a human nature wherein we really wanted to be appreciated by other people. And, lalong lalo na sa mga bata, gustong gusto nila na na-appreciate sila. Lalo dito sa English class kasi nga, hindi sila, hindi sila ganun ka-confident. So, if you try to call them and if they answer either tama or hindi, you should always acknowledge their answers. Huwag mo sabihin na if the student is wrong, say boo boo or wrong, you're wrong, I'm sorry, you're wrong, something like that. Because it would discourage them and the next time maybe, they wouldn't be participating in your class anymore. So always tell or always praise your students genuinely. Okay? Genuinely. Huwag mo sabihin na, okay, good job. Wag po ganun. Okay? So, genuinely. Kasi nga, itong mga bata na ito, mararamdaman nila if the ALT is genuine to them or not. And, kung ano yung energy na pinapakita mo sa kanila, yun din ang ibabalik nila sa iyo. So, just be good to your students. Praise them. And, it would go. And, they will also be good in your, in your class. So, please make a very nice relationship with your students, not only with the students, but your co-teachers and staffs in the school. So, yun po. Those are the gems in teaching, gems plus P in teaching and ES level. So, for the junior high school level, um, I'll be posting another video next week. If you're not yet part of the family, please um, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more ALT videos or anything about Japan. And See you on my again see you on my next vlog goodbye everyone